Hey everybody, how's it going? Hopefully all of you have your cars out on the road by now. The weather's been super nice recently, but today we're gonna be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and that is the extended studs on my Z31. We're gonna be doing both the rears and the fronts. And what we're gonna be using, I just have them up here. I went all out and I got some OEM Nismo extended studs. Uh, there are some cheaper options out there, but uh, these are pretty important and if one of them fails then your wheel falls off and I don't want that. Uh, there's the part number in case any of you are interested. These are for the four lug models like my car but you can also get them with the uh, the five lug. I'll put a description, uh, sorry, a link in the description uh, where I got these. As for lug nuts we're going to be upgrading to Muteki SR48s. I've got the black ones and I also have the matching wheel locks to go with them. Uh, these are the ones that I currently have on my car. I've had them on for maybe three or four years and they've been pretty good to me. They're just Amazon, eBay brand, but I have noticed recently that the threads are starting to strip out. So good thing we're replacing them. Uh, so I guess I'll start with the rear since the car's already up in the air and we'll go from there. So before we even get started, I just want you guys to take in how short the OEM studs are. As you can see, they're about an inch long and once you factor in the uh, thickness of the rim and I also have five millimeter spacers, there's like nothing left. But anyways, uh, the tricky part about the rears is once we take off the rotor, there's not enough space to fit the extended stud behind and in. So some people will say you gotta take the hubs off, but I do not wanna do that. So what I did was we're actually gonna be cutting a access hole in the back of the dust shield and I already did it on this side so I'll give you a quick little look. So here's the dust shield here and right there you can see the little slot I made. I just used a Dremel with a cutoff disc on it and you're not gonna be able to see it now but inside there you'll be able to see the back of the stud and that's going to give enough room to press the old one out and then as well as get the new one in. So I already did this side, I'm going to do that side over there and show you guys and then we can get started. So we just finished cutting out the little access hole in the back of the dust shield. Uh, the first slot I made was a little bit too narrow. I wasn't able to fit the uh, back of the stud in, so I just cut it down a little bit lower and peeled the metal back. The good thing about not fully removing this chunk of metal is when we're all done, we can bend it back into place and give it a little tack weld just so that um, you know the hole's somewhat sealed up again. But now we can take a look inside and you can see one of the studs or one of the, uh, the back of the studs right there. So now we can go out and we can punch the old ones out. ones out I went ahead and tried getting one of the uh, new ones in however the little window that we cut in the back wasn't quite big enough so what I did was I got some tin snips and I'm not sure how easy it is for you to see but I cut two more slots up in the top and bent this piece of metal out of the way which gave us more clearance 
However, uh, the stud still doesn't fit. It's very close. It's able to come almost, the, the front of it's almost able to come through the hole here. But it's still, the, the end piece here is still hitting the top or the bottom of the control arm. So what I think I'm going to have to end up doing is uh, getting the Dremel again and trying to grind away some of the metal and we'll see if that helps. Alright, so we got all four studs in. I used the impact gun to kind of get them seated in properly, and then I used a ratchet to pull them in fully. Well, they're not quite in fully, but they're very close. Once we put the wheel on and we torque the wheel down, it's going to pull them in even more. But these ones are all in, so I'm going to get the rotor on and then the caliper on. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, and then we can get our wheels on and new lug nuts and then do the fronts. So for the front, what's different from the rears is the entire hub assembly here can easily be removed. So we're going to be taking off the center uh, spindle nut as well as all the, uh, the caliper and the bracket and whatnot. And then the rotor and hub can come off and we can put it onto some blocks and we'll use the air hammer, uh, air hammer to punch the old studs out and as well to get the new ones in. All right, so we got the wheels on, everything torqued up, and the car is now on the ground. Uh, the car's a little dirty, but I'll have to wash it at some point soon. 
But if we take a look at the wheels here, you can see our nice new lug nuts, the Muteki SR48s in black. Uh, I'm not sure how easy it is for you to tell, but you can see the ends of the studs through the opening. Um, I'd say it goes about halfway to the lug nut. And if we take a look at the fronts, same thing, but they come out right to about three quarters. Um, I guess there's just less stuff that the uh, stud has to go through. But um, that's about it, and that's how you do the extended lugs on a Z31. Same thing for the four or five lug versions. But other than that guys, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.